Hey friends, Jewel back with another super cool astrology video. And I wanted to talk about the conjunction of Mars and Saturn in the natal chart. What we get when we see this in somebody's birth chart. So Mars is our ego energy. And what we want to be appreciated for has a lot to do with our very, very early experience with our environment and how we deal with and interpret our environment. And is our willpower and our passion and the way, the style that we go after what we want. Saturn is that principle in us that is about achievement and about the long breath, and about delayed gratification, and it is restriction, it is structure, it is the things that take the parts in our character in order to achieve a long-term goal. So think those characteristics. That's the stuff about Saturn. Time, limitation, um, teaching, lessons learned, that is the bad boy that we consider to be Saturn, who really is the basis for life. So this is an aspect that is associated with cruelty. You hear that a lot when you hear about this particular conjunction, and that is because of the ability to detach from and control their feelings. So there's really an... A certain obsession that comes with this conjunction to achieve. Mars has an obsessional quality. It is that natural ruler of the eighth house. And it's the well, let me see the the old fashioned ruler of the eighth house. It carries with it that 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 energy there. So this is one that really, at its basis, is about measured control. And there is often a very early experience of control in the environment. So, and you have to look at the natal chart to see what is the nature of that. Many, many times it was the child themselves that was controlling, that the person that has this particular conjunction they really were able to throw their weight around, a demanding or exacting child. And, you know, things had to be just right. Especially if we have this in the Ascendant or in the second house, or if um, it's contacting the Ascendant ruler or involved in that kind of configuration. So they have this early experience with omnipotence and sometimes it was a parent that they saw as being very very powerful and they thought you know had this impression that if they emulated that then that is what you know where they would see their success in life that was the path that they saw of least resistance or survival because this one is strongly strongly associated with survival so they develop this belief in extreme achievement as they learn and they grow and feel that they must achieve or become ultimately successful or powerful or they will cease to exist or cease to be seen because there was again that early experience of being perfect or being um, powerful or having control, that was their link to life. And so whatever um, that is, for them, that grows into this belief. And so they're actually extremely insecure because of this early environment and that is why we develop this compensatory attitude of I'm going to do it all because I feel like nothing and if I do it all then you will see me then I will have power and I will exist and so it can have a very narcissistic quality to it the reasons why this particular 
conjunction exists. And all Mars-Saturn aspects can have that kind of narcissistic story behind them. So they're very much trying to control their environment through the process of achievement or overachievement. And by becoming the king of something or the queen of something, they see that as life, uh, as existence, as being able to be, as being appreciated. And so, um, you know, a lot of times there was a, an early experience of a loss of power and that, you know, drove the child to this place of um, starting to act out as all-powerful. Sometimes a child can have come from a place of feeling all-powerful because that was their true nature. And then that was squashed. So you have to look at the early environment individually to see what was you know, the detail behind that. Uh, there would, could have been an early experience of sexual abuse. Um, or of being held against one's will in some way. I'm not saying, you know, necessarily of kidnapping. Uh, I'm talking about a feeling that you were powerless or your hands were tied to do something or maybe they were literally tied. This is one that we do associate with a certain amount of physical or sexual abuse if the right alignments are there and the certain houses are involved. So this early experience blossoms into this belief in complete achievement and having to control one's environment in order to avoid being controlled or, um, you know, held or tied in some way. So they can be very, very calculating with this particular conjunction. People's powers of strategy with this aspect are unparalleled. These are excellent tacticians because they can apply themselves to their goal and leave their feelings out of it. They can turn into machines. Whatever it is they see that they want, whatever it is they see that's gonna make them feel powerful or give them that sense of achievement, they can turn off that feeling button because they are so incredibly disconnected from their feelings because that was their strategy as children, was to completely disconnect and become very much machine-like in their approach to what they're going to get. And so they, they can apply themselves to their goals in such a way that they can crush their opponents. It's not enough to win. They have to be the best. They have to set the record. And so um, they think they know the structure of their environment and they will also try to apply that to you and control your environment. So a lot of times when we're dealing with people that have this particular conjunction, we have to, you know, make sure to remind them that we don't clock out at the end of the day because we ain't their employee. It's a relationship. So they have to understand that their fear, which they largely don't recognize or validate because this is one of the aspects where it's actually the most difficult to contact it because of the stories that they tell themselves surrounding it and the level of detachment that they have and that they can achieve from their feelings is monumental. The root it, that's at the root at why they behave so fearlessly and so callously sometimes as they've learned to 
cope that way. And so they can see that as, you know, uh, something that is an asset. Because, you know, we look at our coping structures and say, oh, you know, I cope this way or that way, you know, and, and that's how I get by. We somehow applaud our coping structures when they're coping structures. They should even be there in the first place because they're a symptom that there's a problem is there, that a problem is there. So they are very fearful and fearsome at the same time. They are extremely easily triggered and go around very much constantly triggered. So some of them can remain in a state of controlled agitation. And this can lead to explosions because what they do is they live in this self-imposed pressure cooker. They're recreating the pressure cooker from childhood, right? Because that's what we do as humans. We create these past situations so we have a chance to master them, a chance to make them conscious, a chance to get on top of it, to heal the problem. So they have to let their steam off. And these people can really let off some steam. They can get mean when they really let it go. And you do not want to be in the room because they will unleash on you. They are not in touch with their feelings at the Mars level. So Mars can just come erupting out at certain times because they are controlled by Mars. They think they're the ones doing the controlling. They think they're the ones keeping it in the bottle. But what we don't address and what we repress controls us. And if it will find a way. We will find a way to fulfill our desires, but they come out sideways when we don't own them or aren't in touch with them or give them a name or bring them into our way of being and accept that for what it is and become that. So their desires actually ultimately take them over and create this kind of prison for others because they are so afraid of sitting with those childhood feelings. It creates the situation where they think they're in control. They're not in control. And so there's this cyclical effect of insecurity that's caused here. And this conjunction can very much get in the way of people's relationships because there is an entitlement that comes with this particular conjunction that can make living with somebody that has it very, very difficult. Because when you come from a place of feeling entitled, that's coming from a place of superiority. And that's not coming from a place of partnership. That's coming from a place of ownership or from a place of I know best or a place of I am the authority and I am going to throw my weight around and just because I'm so scary, you're going to do what I want or just because I claim that I have it all or that I know more or that I am the smartest one in the room or that I have more information than you do. There's a lot of psychics that have this one, by the way, and spiritual teachers who claim that they know it all. Uh-huh, do your research. So this is a tough one where um, the thinking is really a lot of the problem. You have to bust through the thinking that they have, that they are the king or the queen. And so, you know, they can be all-knowing and act in very high-achieving or supremely successful ways. But at the same time, they can have these reasons because this is a conjunction. These two planets are mixing. They can have these reasons why they can't do this, or they can't do that, or claim weakness or inability to deliver on something based on like a past issue or a physical inability. It's always gonna come from the past. So, you know, they're incredibly able, but at the same time, they have these things that just bother them and they have this disorder or they have, you know, they work themselves so hard that they develop some kind of physical malady that makes it hard for them to do 
mundane things because a lot of times what they can't accomplish are mundane tasks around the house tasks things that kings and queens don't do they come with with reasons why they can't and to them these are solid reasons and a lot of times they are related to how they are working themselves into the grave because they are a workhorse with this particular conjunction. So it's interesting how their responsibilities sometimes need to be taken on by other people because of this or that, or because they're busy. A lot of times it's because they work. They, they work, they work. Don't you understand that? They bring home the bacon. They can't be bothered with mopping. So um, it's a hard mentality to break through because they're coming from such a place of deserving. So people um, that have this particular conjunction often go into um, professions that have a lot of responsibility or a lot of power, life and death associated with them, surgeons. A lot of surgeons, good surgeons, have this particular conjunction. They can have um, any um, manner of uh, Mars-Saturn aspects, particularly the quintile, but you see the conjunction a lot. And um, generals, high-level military people, CEOs, people that have very exacting jobs and that can bring down the hammer. Um, surgeons is interesting because this aspect implies cutting, digging deep. Saturn is the skin. It is, the skin is our limitation. Think of it, think about that. A lot of people think Venus rules the skin. It's actually Saturn because Saturn is our boundaries. The skin is our boundary. If we didn't have our skin, everything would be flopping around all over the place. So we have to have something that keeps it all in. That is Saturn. And so cutting through the skin, blood, digging deep, what's underneath, those are all, think about it, that is the energy of these two planets together. And um, the surgeons and, you know, high-level military people, they often are notorious for working themselves to death, not taking the time to enjoy what their energy has created. And a certain, you know, um, feeling of, uh, you know, being the, the uh, high level authority of, you know, the hospital, or the high level authority of the military base, or the high level authority of the company. That's very much the attitude that we see with this particular conjunction. So, we see a God complex a lot with this one. And we can, you know, a lot of times associate that with um, surgeons or people that save lives or people that have power over lives. So we also see this one in the charts of serial killers a lot. I'm not saying that people are all going to be like that. And this one also um, is responsible for cutting behaviors in general. Uh, especially if we have Mars and Saturn in Scorpio or the 8th house contacting the 8th house ruler and the ascendant because it is an expression of controlling their pain and self-inflicted pain, that's controlled. They figure, you know, if they have to experience pain, they're going to control it. And in that moment, they can be in touch with their feelings. When they are actually experienced that cutting feeling, they are finally able to feel. And so it's one that um, it, there's a lot of psychology involved in this particular conjunction because we are so numb to our true desires and so out of touch with what that is 
that we have to go to extremes in order to contact with that is we have to go to war. We have to go into a nine hour surgery. We have to lock ourselves in the bathroom, mutilate ourselves to death where a mother can't see it. This kind of conjunction requires help generally when we have it because there is so many layers that we have to get through in order to be able to come to a place where we can sit with those childhood feelings of ultimate powerlessness because that's what we're trying to avoid. We don't want to be there again. And we're always that tiny, tender, unprotected child with this conjunction until we can sit with it again, until we can understand that that's not us, that's not our experience. We can relax. So they are learning ultimately to command their own feelings. Because when we can get in contact with that, when we can learn to sit with that, there's not a need to command the space around us. We, or to be in a feeling of feeling like we are the one who makes all the decisions. It's okay for you to not have to have to be that person. That's okay. It isn't all about your responsibility. And when you can come to that place of understanding that you are not responsible for everything, you can let it go. When people really, truly, with this aspect, really, really get that, when they really, it clicks in their mind, it is not their responsibility to take care of everybody. It is not their responsibility to control everything in their in the environment or else things are going to explode into a war zone or into disaster. Their entire being relaxes and a huge psychic weight is taken off these people when they finally, finally get to that point where they can let that shit go because it's been a long time coming. They've been carrying a tremendous weight that has put them in disconnection to their heart. And so they don't even know who they are a lot of times. They do not know. Their sense of identity has always been tied up with being the king. Think about being born a king. You're born into this role of power. You're born into this role of omnipotence. You're born into this role knowing that you have a role. You're born into a role. A role. Where is you? A lot of times, you know what? You don't even exist because you identify as the king. If you weren't the king, if you some, someday got ousted off the throne, or if you decided you wanted to go do something else, what would your identity even be? Would you have one? That would be a tough thing. That would be very tough because you would have been born into this attitude that it's all up to you. All of a sudden it ain't and it's all about you. Where before it was all about you too, but it was obnoxious and it was getting in the way of your relationships and it was making you scary and we can't relate to you. We can't be intimate with you if you're scary or if you're putting yourself in a place where you are so out of touch that we can't be in touch. So do you ever watch The Dog Whisperer? Or have you ever seen a little dog or even a big dog that thinks that, that, that is in charge of everything, rules the whole house? Like my little chihuahua, who I had in my uh, fifth house moon video, I think. Total psycho. This guy came from the pound. He had to scrap and fight for everything he had. So he had to act like the big boy if he wanted to eat. And so he's always had that attitude. To him, if he doesn't rule the room, he's going to starve. He's going to die. He's not going to be seen. He's not going to exist. He's only four pounds. He grew up with dogs over 100 pounds. It was not a great environment for a little tiny dog to feel safe in. 
little dogs or big dogs like that, dogs that grow up in an environment feeling like they have to be the bully, they have to be in charge, they have to be the one that sees it all and knows it all, and therefore they also rule the household because they have this idea that they're in charge because you're not taking charge as an owner. You're not, well, in Pistol's case, he's just a psycho and there's not much we can do, but and he's really old, so I don't know how much pressure I really want to put on him. But when it comes to people, and most dogs who are not 15 years old, <laughs> you have to be the owner. You have to be the one in charge. You have to be the one that says, I'm the one that says yes and no and calls the shots. And when that dog really gets that communicated to them, they are able to relax. All of a sudden, they become manageable. They become happy because you have taken this enormous pressure off of them that they thought they had to carry. And as a dog, their understanding is that they have to behave in these, you know, barking, biting, controlling ways in order to get us to be safe because they're in control. They're treating us like dogs. So it's a lot of the same kind of thinking. When you realize, when you're actually kind of put in your place, and you realize that it's not all up to you, then it doesn't have to be all about you. You can now become accessible. You can become in contact with your own feelings because you're not running around trying to put on this act that you're the best. That takes a lot of energy, a lot of energy, and it directly affects your ability to interact with the world in an authentic manner. So, um, learning to command yourself by learning to get in touch with and live with those early feelings of inability or powerlessness. It's, um, it's a tough aspect to get a hold of, but people who do end up in very, very happy lives where they are able, they are respected, they are loved, and they are able to be in relationships where they can achieve true intimacy. They're not getting in their own way. So it turns into a very satisfying life. Whereas before they were very coming from a place of starvation starvation for attention, starvation for the attention that comes with achievement. Now it's something that they don't have to command or demand. It's just freely given. So I hope that this was hope helpful. If it was, please subscribe to my channel. You can find me on the internet at truthandaspectastrology.com. You can find me on Facebook at Truth and Aspect Astrology. Yes, I do private consultation. And I'll be back super soon for super cool videos.